What is good, everybody? Today we're diving into a very specific idea that I, that came to me. It came to me, man. Some things just pop in my brain randomly, like a random fix-up on surgery, a random thing in the night thinking about WWE action figures or just collecting in general. This dawned on me, man. What in the hell would happen? What if we got, you know, we, we get so many greatest hits lines. We get so many re-release lines nowadays, man. We get them at a clip. We get the greatest hits. We get the legend's greatest hits. We got the best of Monday Night Wars coming. We get the top talents. We have the From the Vault series, right? So... I was thinking, what if Mattel went against the grain? They would never do this. This wouldn't be a thing. I don't think this would ever happen. However, how funny would it be if we were to get the opposite of that? What if we got the poorest hits? What if we got the poorest figures released, or the best of the bad? Like, the worst figures they've ever produced, but the best of those. You know, the, the greatest worst figures of all time, I guess you could say. What if they put those in a series? Well, Brad, I put my own damn series out there, and I have broke down six, one full WWE Elite Wave of the poorest hits, of the worst of the worst. Best of the year contender? Hell no. We're, to, we're dealing with the worst of the year contenders today, man. And this spans the entire WWE Elite lore. And I try my best to not narrow down all the ones that I that I do not like, like the, the worst of the worst. And I have a Series 2 in mind, but I went ahead and put out my Series 1. I'm going to share it with you here today. And I would love to know if you agree with these picks. Do you think these picks are wrong? Am I doing a hot take? You can let me know down below, as well as letting me know who you would put in your own poorest hits or what figures you do not like whatsoever, man. But let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's get into the first figure. The first figure is a figure that I actually put onto my, in a video, I kind of mentioned this, that kind of evolved into this video today. It is going to be the Elite Series 65 Ronda Rousey. This figure right here is an abomination in a lot of different ways. I mean, we could start it at the top. Head sculpt's not that bad, and the accessories are pretty solid, to be honest with you. However, the rest of the figure is completely lifeless, and we're going to dive into it right now. First of all, the arms, they are single-jointed. I know this is back when arms and legs were single, or the women's legs used to be single-jointed. Every men's figure in the Elite line has pretty much always had double-jointed legs. But this figure had single-jointed legs, single-jointed arms. The jacket arms not only were single-jointed, but they were really bulky. So you didn't get a really good bend in the sleeve anyway because it was the big bulky jacket. The belly button was painted over, which is something they kind of always... They've done that with women's figures. I want to say they still do that to this day. They still put paint over the lower torso, and it just looks like, you know, their stomach's painted. It's not an actual shirt sculpted on there. That's something we kind of still deal with to this day. Not only that, the legs were were single jointed like we talked about but the only leg cut that you get where you can actually rotate the leg is in the thigh you don't have any shin cut you don't have any boot cut and on top of that you can't even move the, when you articulate the foot it articulates the entire leg and it had basic feet on it so not even like elite articulation it didn't even have ankle rocker it was straight up basic articulation this is one of my least favorite Mattel releases of all time I've touched on it before but this had to be included in my poorest hits wasn't even a thing Brad had to absolutely include Ronda Rousey Elite Series 64 throw that figure the hell out in the yard completely skippable the next figure we're going to get into is going to be boulder shoulder himself brad elite 50 rhino this figure you know it's kind of stinky because you know this figure actually in all actuality is not that bad but it's so memorable for how damn goofy it is it is such a goofy figure because of the shoulders the shoulders are so damn massive and the arms were so massive now i know that rhino was pretty big around this time don't get me wrong when you looked at him on tv he was a mountain of a man don't get me wrong. However, this is just not the right execution of this, and it's so funny that this is a figure that actually existed, and I, I love it for that reason. I like the legendary lore of the Rhino figure, but these boulder shoulders are just enormous. It is so crazy, and we never got a Rhino again, so it actually is a is a good figure. It actually is a good figure. I would love to buy this again. I actually, I think I did, I can't remember what I did. I think I torso swapped mine or like switched the shoulders out, and when I did that, the figure got really loose, and it was before I had like a ton of experience coming customizing and maybe I could probably do it better than this go around but I would actually like to make an updated formula rhino or something with double jointed arms and all the stuff but this guy's arms were massive the hands any hand I think the damn forearms were so big I want to say every figure of this also had loose hands every single and this was before interchangeable hands man his hands were just super loose right out of the packaging I think it's because they weren't in there securely because the arms were so big I'm not entirely sure but boulder shoulder elite 50 rhino would have to be one of the poorest tits it's such a legend legendary figure for the wrong reasons that it's hilarious but he had to be included as well we're diving into the next one it is going to be wrestlemania elite edge right here man this figure i've i've been told a million different times that it looks like a hundred different people a lot of people tell me test a lot of people tell me that he look he kind of looks like a bug or something man he looks like uh, i don't know just look at his face he just looks terrible and on top of the terrible head sculpt that looks nothing like edge the torso choice for this guy was horribly wrong this is like this is what's hilarious on his wrestlemania 
WrestleMania Elite, they give him this jacked torso like this. And then on every other Elite Edge ever, besides the Ultimate Edition, they give him the Daniel Bryan torso, which doesn't work for him then. Like, I hate the Daniel Bryan torso on Edge, but this one's not right either. And then even after this figure was released, they went back to the Daniel Bryan torso. So just a very odd release, just a very weird one in terms of release. And I think that, you know, when he returned in 2020 or whatever that was, I think it was 2020, I can't remember off the top of my brain, man. What is that? Ever since the panorama, I can't, my mind's been F. But this Edge figure, you know, they could have used, on his Elite 83 figure, they could have used the Cesaro Elite 23 torso. We've done that torso swap. It's shredded. It looks really good, especially for his return look, you know, when he got in super good shape. Then you also have, you know, the, the Terry Funk torso is the perfect Edge torso that they should have been using since the day, the dawn of time. But I have fixed this figure up with a different head sculpt and a Terry Funk torso, and it looks amazing. So that would have helped this figure greatly, but this figure had to be included at WrestleMania Elite Edge. The next figure is an abomination as well, man. We have Elite 87 Trish. This is not Trish at the slightest, man. I don't know who this is, and on top of the head sculpt being super bad, could have been saved. I think it could have been saved if it had a beautiful head sculpt, and then the rest of the figure was as flat as it is. But, dude, this figure is so flat. It has no detail details. It has those basic boots. It's just like pink and black. It's still got the painted on belly button too. It's just such a flat figure. And the cloth goods are nice, whatever. The cowboy hat is okay, I guess. The head sculpt is what's going to make this figure. And then everything else is just no details whatsoever, man. So when you put this on par with any other figure around this time, it's just such a lifeless thing. Like there are basics that are better than this. And that should never happen. You should never have an elite that's worse than a basic. That should just never happen. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, this Trish is just... It just it does not look anything like Trish, in my personal opinion. You can let me know what you think. I, I can't stand this figure. When I look at it, it makes me sad, and I don't like to be sad. I like to be a happy dad. That rhymed. I, I did that intentionally, actually. The next figure on the set of my poorest hits is going to be Elite 81 Angelo Football Dawkins, man. This figure right here, I mean, I, we've discussed it. It was a huge upgrade when we got Elite 103 Angelo Dawkins. I remember discussing this with the Mattel team at WrestleMania 39 out in Hollywood. And I was so thrilled. I think Angelo Dawkins was one of the best figures from that reveal because they actually upgraded him. They made him better. They made him into a formula that's actually accurate. And I don't know what the hell was going on in the office when this Angelo Dawkins Elite 81 figure was coming out. But he was massive. He's like Braun Strowman size, man. His torso was utterly huge. And it's just not accurate, man. He wasn't this big. His arms weren't this big. His shorts are baggy as hell. And while he may wear a little bit baggier shorts and then maybe a little bit loose, it just looks very goofy because... Because the, th the legs are so damn thick, the, the thighs are thick, the knees are super thick, the lower leg is a little thick at the top because of that, and it just looks just awful. It just doesn't look good, and this figure, thank God, Angelo Dawkins got an upgrade in Elite 103. That, that freaking, I guess you could call it a glow-up in this sense, that glow-up right there is one of the best, like, quote-unquote glow-ups I've ever seen in a figure from one guy's figure to the next. It's happened in the past before, but this one has to be on one of the tops of the top. I mean, unbelievable upgrade, Elite. 81 Angelo Dawkins to Elite 103. I mean, that, that that figure needs to be studied in a lab for how damn bad it was. I, I couldn't stand it. Can't stand it. Just an awful figure. But the last figure to round out my poorest hit, Series 1, is going to be Elite 72 Velveteen Dream, man. This figure right here, very much like his first go-around, they, they gave him the damn Drew McIntyre torso. And this is something that I always talk about with certain talents. I'm always afraid that they may, you know, get ahead of themselves and put out a guy with a Drew McIntyre torso that's way too jacked. This torso has never worked for Velveteen Dream. There's like three other torsos they could have used. They skipped over them. They went straight to the Jack torso, and he's never been this big. Even, hell, even his arms are way too damn big, but that's not only, like, them releasing that first Velveteen with that jack torso is what led to this one, and so they, they we had the first one, which was just shirtless, which was way too big. It certainly was way too big, but then when we got this version, they not only gave him the Drew McIntyre torso, but it's sculpted underneath another sculpted attire, and not only that, it's a terrible attire. I remember when this figure was first shown, they showed this figure, like, two days after he wore it, I think. It was, like, a Friday or something on NXT... On Wednesday night one time, I'm pretty sure, if my mind serves me correctly, he came out and he cut a promo in this gear, and everybody was like, okay, whatever. Then they showed that we knew Velveteen Dream was coming, and then they showed off the wave like that next couple days, and it was the fig, it was literally the attire he just wore, and people were like, damn, how'd they do that? And I guess it's because they, you know, he sent them detailed images or leaked out or to the Mattel team, I guess, that he was going to be wearing this gear, and so they pre-made the figure, and it just isn't a, it's a gear that nobody knew about, right? 
light, first of all, so they drop that on us, and it's just like, what the hell is this gear? And, you know, it's just, it's not a good gear, first of all. I don't like the gear. I thought it was terrible. And he had so many other really good gears before this one that people were like, why the hell would you get this one, which we're not really familiar with right off, and it's not a big moment. And then you had, like, the, what was it? Like, he did a Hollywood Hogan gear. He did another really awesome gear. He's done a lot of different gears throughout his NXT run, and this was not one of them. This was one of the ones that was super forgettable on top of the terrible formula. It just, it wasn't meant to be, man. Not a good figure, not a good release. And that another legendary figure for that reason in, in terms of that. Not as legendary as Rhino, but certainly up to, like, that's what's sad about the worst figures ever. You remember them because they're so damn bad compared to how highs they are. Like, best figures of the year, it, it, certainly Mattel's track record. They don't bat a thousand, but their track record of putting out banger figures is certainly, I mean, they're in the 90s percentile-wise, I would say. For every, for every 10 figures, nine of them are probably going to be pretty damn good, if not 80%. They're between 80 and 90%, maybe even 95% up in there, man. They are up there. Nobody bats a thousand, but Jesus, these figures in this poor set series are not very good, man. But I would like to know down in the comment section below where you guys stand on a poor hit series. I, I just thought it would make for a fun video. Get on here, rant about a few figures. You know, I always I like to discuss the great figures and ranking them and stuff, but that's why I like ranking them and giving you the lore and rundown is because I like the I like to discuss the lowest of the lows with the figures and the highest of the highs. So, you know, I like to, you know, it's 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 honestly, you got to talk about number one, but you got to talk about number 10 as well. So that's just how it goes. But that is pretty much going to wrap up the poor hits. I'd love to know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below, where you stand, all those different things. Huge shout out to our Patreon. Patreon members, man. Appreciate all those fellas over there. You guys are absolutely incredible. Always appreciate all you fellas over there, man. Have to give them a huge shout out every single day because I appreciate them so much. But thank you guys for watching. That is pretty much going to wrap the video. I'd love to know your thoughts again. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later.